Hello, this is Dave from ERC, and we're getting ready to start the build on the Dancing Wings version 2 Eagle. This is the 1430 millimeter Eagle. So this is the large one, and the first thing we're going to do is build this wing. This has all got the servos on it and everything. So let's do that right now. All right, let's start by gluing the two main wing halves together. I'm going to put on an ample amount of fabric tack from Walmart. Just spread it evenly. And then press the two halves together and again make sure the glue is all across the surface. Then just pull it apart and let it tack up for two or three minutes. Okay, now that the glue has had time to tack up, let's go ahead and press the two wing halves together. Make sure the back side of the wing has the wing spar grooves aligned perfectly. If not, adjust to make sure they are while the glue is still loose. Now put some weight on it and let it dry. Now let's glue in the two wing spars on the bottom of the wing, starting with the front wing spar. Apply some medium CA glue into the groove. Then press in the wing spar, and you can wipe off any excess glue. Now let's do the same thing to the rear wing spar. I've applied two clamps to the ends of the main wing spar just to keep it down while it's drying, and then two pins on the smaller wing spar in the back of the wing. Now I'm going to take some more fabric tack and just go down the seam between the two wing halves to make sure that it's pretty sturdy. Don't want that to rip loose. Now let's install the carbon fiber to reinforce the V-tail sections. And also install the carbon fiber to retain the rubber bands. We're going to put some medium CA into the groove, just as we did on the main wing. Then insert the carbon fiber and wipe off any excess glue. Okay, now we're going to work on the rubber band retainers and what I do on the front one is make a slot and insert the carbon fiber into that slot. This strengthens the front part of the wing. Once you're happy with the fit go ahead and put some CA in the groove. Put the wing spar in and wipe off any excess. The rear wing spar or rubber band retainer can go right on the top. All we need to do is put some glue across the top and then put the carbon fiber on there. Then put two clamps on to hold it while the glue hardens. Now we're going to go ahead and install the servos. These are 9 gram servos that came with the kit. We're going to put one in each hole on the wing. First we check with the servo testers to make sure they function, put it in the middle position, and then make the servo horns go straight up on a 90 degree angle. Then check again with the servo tester to make sure they operate alternate to each other. We can put the screws in now too. Alright, now we need to cut around the servo to make sure the flanges fit into the hole. Make sure the servo horn can also move easily. Check the fit again, and if you're happy with it, we can go ahead and put the glue on. Again, using fabric tack, just put the glue around the edges. Don't put any on the bottom, because we might want to remove the servo if it malfunctions. Okay, now we can do the same thing to the other one. Again, just putting the glue around the edges, none on the bottom, in case we have to remove it later. Okay, now we can let those dry, and we'll go ahead and route the wires into the slots while they're drying. Now 
I like to put a little glue across the wires just to hold them in place so they don't rip out. Okay, using fabric tack now to just go ahead and strengthen up the hinge lines. I put a little glue in and then wipe it smooth with a barbecue skewer. Do this to both sides. Alright, now we're going to add some carbon fiber. This didn't come with a kit, but I want to add this carbon fiber to strengthen the ailerons. They're kind of floppy as they are. So I cut two pieces of carbon fiber. I'm going to run it on an angle just like that. Now I'm going to slot, not too deep, don't go all the way through, just about halfway through. Bend it to open up the opening. All right, now we'll insert the carbon fiber. Now we're going to use the medium CA and just put a bead right along the top of it. This will soak into the groove and hold it tightly. Do this to both sides. Now we'll just go ahead and put some weight on it while it dries. This will keep it flat. There's both sides drying. Now we're going to work on putting the clevises onto the control rods. So I'm sanding the tips of the control rods and now I'm going to take each clevis and just drill out the hole big enough because it's a tight fit for these particular control rods. Your kit may vary. Once we get it into the hole, we can then put some CA on it to make sure it's locked in tightly. There's a hole on the side where you can pump in some CA and then put some on the back and on the tip. Once those are dry, we want to put on the control rod keepers onto the servo arms. So I'm just going to drill the hole big enough to take that control rod keeper. Then push it into the hole and put the nut on the other side. Notice the keepers are facing in towards the servo. Now we'll use a little bit of Loctite. Just dab it on slightly onto the threads. Don't want to get any on the plastic because it might deteriorate the plastic. Now we'll test fit the control rod. That's about where the control horn is going to go right there. Now we'll go ahead and apply some more of the fabric tack to hold the control horn into the slot. Also apply some fabric tack to the bottom and put the plate on top. We'll do this for both sides. Now I'm going to drill out the hole for the clevis to go into. I'm going to put a piece of fuel line hose over the control rod. I'm going to use that to lock down the clevis. Okay, insert the clevis onto the control horn. And then put the fuel line hose over that to lock it in. Now we can tighten down our screws as long as the ailerons are parallel. Let's test the ailerons to make sure they operate correctly. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and install the wingtip stabilizers. Align them with the pattern that's on there. Align the patterns, draw a line to mark it, and then go ahead and use the fabric tack again to apply an ample amount of glue to the end of the wing. Now press the feathers against the end of the wing. Make sure the glue spreads evenly and then pull it back apart and let it tack up. After about two minutes, we can go ahead and put it back, but let's work on the other side. I'm going to mark that just the same way. Apply the ample amount of glue again. This fabric tag comes from Walmart. I think I've already said that. Go ahead and do the same thing 
pressing it on and then pulling it apart and letting it pack up. And then we can go ahead after a couple minutes and apply both of the stabilizers to the wing tips. Okay, once that's done, we can go ahead and put on the wing bone ornaments. These don't have any real function, they just make the bird look more like a bird. Using the foam tack again, we're going to press it against there, on the front, on the leading edge, and then pull it back apart and let it tack up for a while, just a couple of minutes. We'll do the other side as well. Okay, now we're ready to apply them after they've tacked up. I'm going to go ahead and do the right side first, and then we'll do the left side. Now it comes time to cut off the excess material on the wingtip stabilizers. This is using a box cutter. This is your standard box cutter. I think I got this one at Harbor Freight. Now that that material is removed, we can go ahead and check it out. It looks pretty smooth. And that finishes the wing, so the wing is all complete now. Okay, so that's the wing build, and next time we're going to be working on the fuselage so we can get the main body of the bird built. Now this is not it, this is the smaller version, the 1200 millimeter Eagle, but it'll look like this, but just bigger. And that'll be in the next video, so stay tuned for that.